Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. True friends. All right. Let's start with Sirach chapter 6. The book of Sirach. Chapter 6 and verse 1. Instead of a friend, become not an enemy, for thereby thou shalt inherit an ill name, shame, and reproach. Even so shall a sinner that hath a double tongue. So the scripture said, instead of a friend, don't become an enemy. Because you're going to have friends that will become enemies. And those ones who become enemies, they're going to have what? An ill name, a bad name. You're going to hear stories about them. You're going to hear... About, you know, how they were deceiving, you know, all kind of evil things. So the scriptures say, instead of a friend, don't become an enemy. So that way you don't uh, have an ill name, right? And a sinner is always what? Double tongue. So if you're going to be a friend, you can't be a double tongue person. Like, you know, like, okay, we friends. All three of us here is friends. And then I tell you one thing and then I tell them another thing. You know what I'm saying? I laugh with you and then talk behind your back. That's a double tongue. You got to inherit it, an ill name, all right? Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 14. Let's see something real quick. Matthew 26, 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 14. Any day now. Don't be under pressure. Just find it. <laughs> the book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. So, that wasn't Judas a friend of Christ? They worked together for three years, you know what I'm saying? Breaking bread together, doing all kinds of things together, right? But he went to the priest and asked him, Hey, listen, they didn't even come to him. He went to them. Say, hey, what, what you going to give me to, uh, uh, I, and I'll deliver that dude to you. Read. And I will deliver him unto you, and they covenant with him for 30 pieces of silver. So he agreed with, for 30 pieces of silver, he's going to betray his friend. Read. And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. So the betrayal didn't happen right away. So now he got his money, you know what I'm saying? He go back around the friends and then feign himself as a friend. Watching to see, okay, what's the best time for me to do this? I mean, there's plotting that went into it. You see what I'm saying? But that's what a double-tongued friend will do. Go to uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 27. Let's start at verse 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 27 and verse 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was con condemned, repented himself. And brought again the 30 pieces of silver unto the chief priests and elders. So Judas now, after he betrayed Christ, right? He caught, he caught himself, but guess what? It's already too late. He already betrayed Christ. So after that, he's trying to make, you know, amends. Like, yo, here's back your money. Read. Saying, I have sinned. And oh, that see, it's always after the fact. Hindsight is 2020, right? That's what they say. Right. He should have he known that from before. That the thought of him betraying uh, Christ, his friend, was sin. And he should not have done it. But guess what? He already went through, uh, through with it. Read. In that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And he did what? And hanged himself. So he got, he threw away the money. Because they're like, yo, we don't give a damn. We're not taking that money back. We got what we wanted. You know what I'm saying? The money's what you wanted. You got what you wanted. Do whatever the, whatever you want with it. And after that, he went and hanged himself. Are we not talking about Judas till today? Right. Does Judas Iscariot has a good name? 
Not at all. Have you met the brother named Judas Iscariot in the truth yet? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody want that last name Iscariot. Right. So his name rang bell till today, but not in a good way. That's what the scripture says, Sirach, instead of a friend, don't become an enemy because you're going to give yourself a bad name. This truth is a moving machine. The Mosai is gathering the 12 tribes together. Which means what? Our job is to get a good name, a good reputation in the truth. All right? That's what we got to do. Because if we don't, then we're going to inherit an Ill, Ill name. And that Ill name is going to take us what? Straight to perdition. Give me uh, Sirach 6. We're going to go to verse uh, 7. Sirach 6, verse 7. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, mm -hmm. prove him first. So if you're going to get a friend, prove that friend first. Read. And be not hasty to credit him. Don't be in a rush. Like as soon as you meet somebody, oh, we click it. Everything is all gravy. Hell no. That's not what the Bible says. So if you want your life to go well, the scriptures say, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Now understand one thing. It's not that Christ didn't prove Judas. Judas was ordained to do certain things. So certain people around you, you're going you're gonna to see the spirit in them. Christ knew he was going to betray him. But he had to let it happen because what? Prophecy had to be fulfilled. So as you're proving people, certain people, you're going to see them right away. But at the same time, we're part of a body. We can't just, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, because you see certain little um, attributes in a person to just push them away. You keep praying for them, hoping that they get their mind right. But ultimately, you must prove a friend. You must test the person to see what they're made of. Poke at them to see how they respond. You understand? That's what the scripture says to, say, um, to do. Give me Sirach 37. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Every friend saith, I am his friend also. See that? Everybody say, oh yeah, I'm his, I'm his friend. You know some people don't even know you, but they say, yeah, yeah, I know him, I know him. Nah. Just because we talk doesn't mean we're friends. Just because we're in the same body doesn't mean we're friends. We are all brothers and sisters, but it takes a lot to become a friend. And even then, guess what? Your purpose coming here is not to seek for friends. You follow? It's about you getting your mind right, get your spirit right. And in due time, guess what? You're going you're gonna to see a lot of people that are uh, like-minded and you're going to click better because now we're clicking in the righteousness. Read. But there is a friend which is only a friend in name. There's people that's just a friend in name. Yeah, that's my friend. Yeah, that's my friend. How many people in school? Yeah, that's my friend. Was that person your real friend? Especially, man, Facebook friends. You go to people's page, 2,000 friends. Like, really? Nah, those are the friends in names. I got 2,000, you probably cool with two. Because those are Facebook friends. There's nobody, I don't care how much time you have in your hand. They have the time to entertain 2,000 people. Because some people make the argument, no, no, they're really my friends. No, they're not. You don't have the time to entertain 2,000 people. So how, how are you going to prove 2,000 people? Read. Verse 2. Is it not a grief unto death when a companion and a friend is turned to an enemy? What? Say that again. Is it not a grief unto death when a companion and a friend is is turned to an enemy. It's a grief unto death when a companion is turned into an enemy. It hurts. Because those are people like you trusted, you you know what I'm saying? Right. You break bread with. <clears throat> always conversing, always, uh, uh, you know, counseling, you know what I'm saying? Building up. And then the friend turned into an enemy. That thing hurts. Read. Verse 3. O wicked imagination, whence camest thou into cover the earth with deceit? There is a companion which rejoiceth in the prosperity of a friend, but in the time of trouble will be against him. So you're going to have certain friends. When things are great, when things are good, they're always going to be around, partying with you, eating with you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, toasting with you. Why? Because things are good. Like, especially if your house always got food, always got good drinks, right. you know what I'm saying? People are always going to be there, but as people are always going to be there, you got to start trying people to see who's there for the food, who's there for the drink. 
And who's really there because they care. Because not everybody around you care for you. Like, I like to use that example. Um, there's a DVD I used to have. Uh, uh, it was about Muhammad Ali. And there's a white lady. She never missed a fight. And she always had front row. So they decided to interview her thinking that she was a fan. Mm. Being that, you know, she's always front row. They say, yo, why you always come to all the fights? She said, because I can't, I don't want to miss the opportunity on the day that he get his ass knocked out. So she was at all the fights, front row, but she was not there to support. She wanted to be there when that man falls. So you're going to have friends that's around you, partying with you, drinking with you, eating with you. They're just there because they know one day, like they can't wait for that day for you to fall so they can rejoice. So examine your circle, examine the people you keep around you, and prove a friend. Read that verse again. Verse 4. There is a companion which rejoiceth in the prosperity of a friend. Read. But in the time of trouble will be against him. In the time of trouble will do what? Be against him. Yo, in the time of trouble, that person will side up with your enemies. Because they figure, yo, this is the day that I've waited for for so long. That means that person was there with you, eating with you, drinking with you, partying with you, but they was never with you. In their heart, they, was, they were always cursing you. Like one of the main reasons they're going to be around is to do exactly what Judas did. Seeking for opportunities. Trying to see if you're going to slip up in your speech and say something that could use against you to bring you down. That's what the Bible says. So you can choose to ignore it. That's up to you. But if we say we care about our salvation, we got to take everything the Bible say to heart. And we're not talking about being in your chest, heart, your mind. I mean, meditate on these things and apply them in your lives. It's going to avoid you a lot. Uh, you're going to avoid a lot of headaches. Certain things are bound to happen regardless. But overall, you should still apply these things in your life. All right. There is a companion which helpeth his friend for the belly. There's a companion that do what? Which helpeth his friend for the belly. Which helpeth his friend for the belly, read. And taketh up the buckler against the enemy. So, you like, when you look at war, right? Uh, back in the days, we had shield and bucklers and swords. And you have a king who who's a king, but he's a king over a small kingdom. A lot of time when war come, he got a higher... Uh, uh, what they call them, is it? Um, mercenaries. Mercenaries, there you go. Thank you. He got to hire mercenaries. Those mercenaries are people he knows. People he chill with. Mm. But when it comes to the war time now, he got to pay them to fight for him. So, what that says about those friends? The highest bidder. Which means another king can pay them more and they'll take shield and buckler and fight on behalf of that other king. Even though they're cool, they have, they're, they're cool with you. Mm. But at the end of the day, they're not really cool with you because they like you. They're cool with you because they're getting advantage. You're a king, you got money, and they could be around. And, and you know, if you need them, they're gonna, you pay them, and they're going to do what you're, you're bidding. So you got to know who's around you for real. Who's around because you always have the best liquor? Who's around because you have the best food? Who's around because you have the nicest house? The nicest backyard, the nice swimming pool. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody want to have fun, especially in the summer. So who's around because of the things that you have? How can you know if you don't try a friend? Read that verse again. Verse 5. There is a companion which helpeth his friend for the belly, and taketh up the buckler against the enemy. Read. Forget not thy friend in thy mind. And be not unmindful of him in thy riches. So the scripture says, forget not thy friend in thy mind and be not unmindful with thy riches. So if you have friends, do treat them good. However, test them, try them, so you can see what they're about. All right? Give me Sirach 29, verse 10. The book of Sirach, chapter 29 and verse 10. Lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend. And let it not rust under the stone to be lost. So the scripture said, do what? Lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend. So you got brothers, you got friends. Guess what? If they need you, you're supposed to help them. 
The scripture said, lose your money for your friend. Some people will not help you. Because they're like, they're too cheap. If you have a brother, you have a friend, guess what? They're in need. Help them. Uh, give me Proverbs 18. Sorry, Proverbs 3. Verse 27. Let's see what that, uh, uh, let's go deeper into uh, lose your money for your friend. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. So, you, you are in a body. People need help, right? Just because you may, you know, feel a certain way about a person, doesn't mean you can't help them. Because I did it, the scripture said, lose your money for your brothers and your friends, right? So you're going to have people that you're closer to, and you're going to have people that just a brother in the, in the congregation. That, you know, you talk, you shalom, there's no, there's no beef, but, you know, you're not that tight. You still got to treat them good. So the scripture just say, when it's in your power to do good, don't say no. Read. Say unto thy neighbor, go. Say, let me read that again. Say not unto thy neighbor, go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give. When thou hast it by thee. So now, I hope you don't get Christian in your head just now. That doesn't mean every single time people come and ask you, because the scripture tells you, leave not the life of a beggar. So this is going into somebody who's doing for themselves. You know, everybody falling a hard time. You're going to help your friend your, or your brother. But if you're a beggar, every day you're begging for $5, you can't keep a job or nothing, the scripture says it's better to die. So don't, don't get it twisted. Now you turn Christian. Next thing you know, you broke. The scripture also say, help your neighbor according to what you have. And make sure you don't fall in the same situation. So I have to put those two scriptures out there so you don't, you don't turn Christian on this one. Right. Now all your money's gone. You just want to give everybody all your money and you broke. You can't pay your mortgage. So treat your friends good. At the same time, be very wary of people. Because some people, you give them, if they see that they could always get a dollar from you, guess what? They're always going to come. When you notice somebody's a beggar, guess what? You got you to gotta start set, telling them no. And watch how they behave once you say no. So two different aspects of losing your money for your friend. All right? Uh, go to Proverbs uh, 18.24. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 24. Yep, there. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. So if you cannot say you want friends and then you're always mad, you're always moody, you're always rude, you're always like, you know, when you talk, it's like everybody's like, oh, gosh. Like, you know what I mean? You're not going to have friends that way. So he that wants friends must first do what? He that have friend must first show himself to be what? Show himself friendly. So you got to be friendly. You got to be, uh, how you say? Give me cordial. some word. Cordial. Cordial. You know what I'm saying? Have, what? You got something for me? Amicable. Amicable. Damn, brother, using big words. <laughs> big word. I'm bad, brother. I didn't mean no disrespect. You know, Boston people got that Harvard education. Yeah, education, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to be amicable. Uh, what's the word you use? Cordial. Cordial. You, you understand? However, don't let your guards down. You still got to prove that friend. All right? Uh, give me uh, um, Sirach 6. Finish this out just... Oh, sorry. Finish it. And there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. There's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Like, I have people in this truth that are way closer to me than even my mom and dad. Let alone my own blood brother. You follow? Because why? This is your new family. So if this is your new family, you got to... Think about this for a second. In the world, you fight all the time with your regular, your relatives, right? Right, right. And what happened after you fight? You make up, make right? Up. Yeah. Yeah, a month might go by, two months might go by, sometime a year go by, but at the end of the day, guess what happened? You back to You back together. It might take somebody to die in the family, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To see each other at the funeral, it's like, ah, hold up, bro. Like, everything's cool. So it's like, in the shoof, why we can't do that? Well, this is supposed to be a family. So families fight, but we're supposed to get back together again. Because if we're not getting back together, God is taking note of that. God is taking note of that. How you choose to treat your brothers and your sisters in the truth. Because the scripture says, as much as you have done it to the least of them, you did it unto me. 
So be mindful, you know what I'm saying, how we deal with people. Again, disclaimer, we all not going to be best friends. We all not going to walk holding hands, singing kumbaya. But guess what? There's a level of respect. If we all say we believe in this Bible, there's a level of uh, friendship we're supposed to have. There's a level of camaraderie we're supposed to have. I just used a big word, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boston. Boston is rubbing <laughs> up on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be mindful of these things. Uh, get, go, go, go to Sirach 6. So I want to start. Uh, verse 5. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 5. Sweet language will, will multiply friends. What multiply friends? Sweet language will multiply friends. Now be rude. Sweet language will multiply friends. Be arrogant. Sweet language will multiply friends. Sweet language will multiply friends. You have to know how to talk to people. You can't talk to people any which way and expect for people to like you or people to want to be around you. And among us, we should have what? Sweet language around us. Because we are brothers in the faith of Christ. We should be treating each other with a lot more respect. Like, I feel like uh, some of us probably deal with Esau better than we deal with our own brothers and sisters in this right. truth. At work, we deal better with the heathens than we do with our own brothers and sisters in this truth. It's like we have sense when we're out in the world, but no sense when we're among our brothers and sisters. That's what You know what that stands from? Self-hatred. You so piss at yourself, you got to take it out on everybody else. How can you have this truth and be, like, listen, a lot of times people are pissed at themselves because they hate the life that they lived or why not. Every creature in Christ is a new creature. Let go. Let go of your old self. Become that new creature like the Lord wants you to be. Change your ways. If you realize you're a person that gets very moody very fast, guess what? Pray about it and fast. That the most I put a smile in your face because the scripture said the joy of the Lord is my strength. So if you're always mad, you're always angry, something is wrong with your spirit. Because if you if if, if the Lord is in you, right? right? The scripture said the joy of the Lord is my strength. How, how can you not be joyous? How can you walk on a new moon looking like King Kong? <laughs> Does that make sense? New moon, you should be coming up in here sliding left to right. You know what I'm saying? Always already in a, in a good mood, in a good vibe, regardless of what's going on in your life. Because you know you're celebrating the feast of the, of, of the Lord. And that goes for all the feasts, especially on the Sabbath. Some people walk in the Sabbath, their face is dragging. They're sitting here, their face is still out there. That's how, that's how much their face is dragging. It's like, why do why you even bother come? Those are the things we got to be mindful of. Read that. Book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 5. Sweet language will multiply friends, and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. Fair uh, speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. Kind greetings. So when you see people, it won't be like... Mm -hmm. Be like a sincere, hey, shalom, sign Christ, bless. Like, you know, if you're a dude, like, yo, nice seeing you, brother. Like, you know, sincerely. But when you're rude, people shalom you. Oh, yeah, shalom, most high class blessing. And then the people, they disappear because guess what? They don't want to be around you. It's grievous. Because they know if they stick too long, there's going to be some, e like, you're going to spew some evil. Uh, give me private, uh, sorry. Jump to verse 8. Verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. So if we go back to that situation. Some friends are a friend to his own occasion. So, yeah, lose your money for your friends. Sweet words multiply friends. You know what I'm saying? But, however, do not neglect. Jump, jump to verse 7. Verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. So you still got to prove that friend. Don't be hasty to credit people. Because don't, don't fall into that Christian spirit. Oh, if your friend asks you if it's in your power, you, or, do you know that dude? No, you don't know him from nowhere. So you got to be very mindful because people will take advantage of you. Because not everybody that come in the truth is there sincerely. Some people might think this is another Christian church. Let me come and take advantage of these fools. Because everybody got games out there. And con artists are always looking for the next best thing. And this is new. Right. Like, hey, let's try it out. You never know. They sit down and watch a class. It says Acts 4. And they all had everything in common. There's nothing that lacked. 
They're like, oh, word? That's how they feel? Okay, I'm in there. Sound like that dude. Uh, the video Bishop said, uh, played? I'm in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Post up. Oh, you got some brothers. That you only see them um, on feast days. Mm. Sabbath come, nowhere to be found. As soon as the feast day come, they bring their friends, their kids, everybody. Yo, it's a party. Let's go. Free liquor and free food. Then you start asking yourself, is this brother really here for this truth? Or is he here for the liquor and the party? Burgers and fringes. Then you, burgers and fringes. Then you got to start checking those brothers. Start making them feel uncomfortable to see what they're about. That's proving a friend. Read. Verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion mm -hmm. and will not abide in the day of, tr of thy trouble. So some people, they're only there when things are benefiting them. The moment you get into trouble, pew, gone. gone. You sick. Hey, man, I can't get out of bed, man. Can you please go pick me up some soup or some tea at, at the store? What? Huh? I, damn. But there's no service where I'm at. I'm going to call you back. But... I guarantee you, you had called that brother A. What's up? Come through, man. Just got this new bottle. Come through. Word? I, matter of fact, I was already outside. <laughs> <laughs> I was just right down the block. <laughs> so you got to be mindful. P try people. Read. Verse 9. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. So those are the worst people. Because we had a little argument. Everything you share with them, they tell everybody. That's why they say prove a friend first. So when you meet people, don't tell them your whole life story. Like sometimes, this is what you do. You take something that, that you are over, like it doesn't really bother you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a bone, there's a little juice on it, but it's nothing to you. Mm -hmm. And then you throw that bone at them. And give it time and see if that bone comes back to you by other means. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If I throw this bone at you and it's coming at best, a little bring it back to me, what that tells me. If I give you this pen mm -hmm. and then the next time I see this pen is in the hand of best, what that means? You gave it away. You didn't return it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not your. Uh... That means you gave it to best. Right. So if I, the bone I'm throwing at you is me telling you something, that's a little juicy, but it's not really that juicy. Mm. And it, I, it doesn't bother my spirit. Mm. You got to try people and see how quickly that person run with it and go spread it. Mm. Then you know where you stand with that person. Little tricks you could do to see where people stand. Read. Verse 9. And there is a friend who being termed to, to, to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. So you're going to find some people, the only time you see them, those are things you got to pay attention to. It's only where there's a party going on, where you have a barbecue, where, where you have uh, people uh, come over, where there's drinks, you know what I'm saying? Like, a brother might come to your house every Friday. Mm -hmm. What happened every Friday? There's always liquor, there's always food. Right. But of GP, like just, you know, to come check you. Hey, what you doing uh, today, man? You off? Ah, I'm going to come chill. Never happen. Only come on the days that they you know, there's always going to be something popping. You got to pay attention to these things. Read. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. So he will command your servants. Now, you put that, let's say you had, you know, real servants. Now, nah, put that there. Put that there. Now, nah, you don't have to do nothing. I got this. Bro, that's my house. Why, why, why are you so bold over my servants? Mm. Read. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee. If thou what? If thou be brought low, he will be against if thee. If you are brought low, that same man, that same woman that was lording over your servant is going to turn against you. Did I wrote this or the, or, 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 or the Lord uh, wrote it? Lord. That's the Bible. Ain't no two ways about it. it. He will turn against you because guess what? Some friends are only a companion at the table. So they, 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 their loyalty is to whatever, they, wherever, whatever their lust is. Their loyalty could be rice and beans. It could be jerk chicken. 
It could just be both. You know what I'm saying? Wherever there's food, he's there. Wherever there's liquor, he's there. Or you see, Buzzer will call and try different numbers. Oh, what you doing? A word? All right, I'll get back to you. Let me think about it. Then call another brother. He's looking for the best mm. place to be. Whoever's going to have the best food, the more liquor, then that's where he's going to be. Then you call him. After you was getting back, and now I decided to go so-and-so place. Then you call so-and-so, what's going on? Yo, yeah, man, I'm having a big party. Yo, come through. Then you show up. They, they, look, they can't even look at you now. Right. Big plate of food in their hand. Because they only care about where the, where the biggest party is at. That's just one example. There's other lusts people people um, have. Or some people want power. So there be brothers or soldiers. They be they refuse to hang out with people in their rank. They only want to rank hang out with the captain with a with an officer of 20, because they're looking to be recognized. They're looking for power. You got to pay attention to those things. It's like okay, you so want to hang out with me so much. Why you never hang out with your peers? That's supposed to help build you up. You got to watch these things. Read. Verse 12. And if thou be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. Mm -hmm. Separate thyself from thine enemies and, yeah. and take heed of thy friends. So separate from your enemies and take heed of thy friends. So you got to have a watchful eyes because not everybody around you is real. And that's real talk. Not everybody around you is real. Guess what? We all going to go through it. I got different levels, different devils until we meet our Judas. Different levels, different devils until you meet your Judas. Because guess what? Your Judas is already around you. You just don't, you just don't know him yet. Some of us is going to catch us by surprise. Like, oh, damn, you? Never see it coming, but that's what it is. Life. Read a faithful friend is a strong defense. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Read. And he that found such a, a one has found a treasure. If you find a faithful friend, most I bless you with a great treasure. You know who had a uh, uh, who had found a faithful friend? David. David. We're gonna read him about it. I, uh, we're gonna read a little bit into it uh, in a few scriptures. That's a great treasure because guess what? They got your back in righteousness. Because a lot of people think they got a faithful friend, not realizing they have a conglomerate of evil. They, they form a, a, an evil conglomerate. Because the only way you're going to know your friend is faithful is only if that friend is real and check you regularly. And I'm not talking about come check you. When you step out of line, they check you through the scriptures. That's a faithful friend. But a lot of times, we are, we, we, we are weak guts. We have weak guts and we can't take people checking us. Guess what? We push away a faithful friend for a fake friend because we want a friend that's going to tell us everything smooth. No, a faithful friend will let you have it. We'll let you know what it is. While we're laughing and, every, laughing and everything, guess what? You step out of line, burp, put you back in line. And continue as if nothing happened. But if you're not in the spirit, you, you're going you're gonna to have a faithful friend and lose the faithful friend because you don't want that friend. You want the friend that's going to listen to your dumb stuff, to your uh, uh, garbage, and that's never going to re uh, reprimand you or check you for talking out of turn, for being out of pocket, like Deacon Lava like said. Once you're out of pocket, a faithful friend is supposed to put you in your pocket. Those are the friends you want to have around you. People that apply scriptures, like, hey, mm -mm -mm -mm, that thing you just say right there, nah. Mm, I, I, like, check the scripture out. Yo, that's totally wrong. And when somebody's doing that to you, you should know you found a faithful friend. But the key thing is, not everybody wants a faithful friend. A lot of people want gossiping friends. They want, a lot of people got the spirit of murmuring, so therefore they want somebody that's going to listen to their murmuring. They don't want to be around anybody that's too keen into picking up garbage. They'll try friends, you know, you're supposed to prove a friend for righteousness. They'll prove a friend for unrighteousness. The same way I say you throw a bone and see if it comes back to you, They'll come to you with some evil stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then when you, if you check them on it, they're like, I was just testing you, I was just playing. Right, right. And then you're going to watch that person don't really come around you no more. But if you bite the garbage they give you, they're keep going to keep coming. 
and feed you. And then until they, you form a friendship, but you realize one thing, when you guys sit down, when y'all come together, is it in righteousness? Or is it always talking about somebody else? Or is it about always murmuring and complaining about the congregation? What is the nature of your friendship? Do you guys go over scriptures? Or do you eat burgers and wear fringes and talk trash about people or the congregation? You got to examine yourself. See what, what kind of friends you have around you. Read on. Verse 15. Nothing doth countervail a faithful friend. And his excellency is unvaluable. You cannot value a faithful friend. We're supposed to be about getting this kingdom, right? Right. And here's the thing. All of us going to lean a little bit sometimes. And that's what the faithful friend is for. When you're leaning, for them to be like, oh, anchor yourself. That, mm -mm, you're going off. Mm -hmm. That's what a faithful friend do. Prevent you from falling. Why would you hate that? Because if you say you're about this truth, and the people you hang out with, all y'all do is murmur and complain, are you really about this truth? You're supposed to be about solution, problem solving, and you need friends that's going to put you in, in, in the right path when, you, when you're falling short. Because guess what? We're all going to trip. That's what the scriptures say, a righteous man falls seven times and get back up. You need people to help you get back up sometimes. Like certain times you bang your foot, that toe swell up and you can't walk. You need, you know what I'm saying? You need somebody to hold up. Sometimes Crutch. you need two people yeah. to use as crutches. One on each side and then you hopping on one foot. Yeah. That's what the scriptures say, woe unto him that is alone. You're always going to need people, but you need the right uh, people with the right mind frame around you. People that got their mind wrapped up tight around the scriptures. That was Leviticus 5 and 1, you in the quickness. But a lot of us, we want, uh, uh, you, want you want sympathy, you want uh, uh, somebody to trim their waist. You want somebody to trim their waist to seek love. Be careful. Read. Verse 16. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. Mm -hmm. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. Who will find a faithful friend? A faithful friend is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. So if you fear God, you're going to find a faithful friend. Because when a faithful friend corrects you, because you fear God, you're going to accept the correction. But if you're, not fearing, if you're not fearing the Lord, when correction comes, you're going to look at the person as the damn devil. Always with that Bible thing, always with the scripture. What that says, you're not about the Lord, you don't fear God. Because if you fear God, you'll be afraid to do something wrong. So when you do wrong and you find somebody to correct you, you'll be saying, thank you. Not build up hatred for, for the person correcting you. Oh, he's always about the Bible, always the Bible, the Bible. Can we just have some fun? Yeah, the Bible is fun. It's fun to be alive. It's not fun to get burnt up when the Lord returns. Right. So if you fear God, you're going to appreciate those people that's in your life that can correct you with scriptures. Read. Verse 17, whoso feareth the Lord shall di direct his friendship aright, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. So if you fear God, you're only going to associate yourself with people that fear the Lord as well. So iron going to be sharpening iron. But if you don't fear God, the scriptures say, whosoever fear God shall direct his friendship aright. So if you don't fear God, your friendship cannot go right. It's going to go left. It's going to go wrong. If you don't fear God, you're going to amass people that don't fear God with you. Because righteousness and unrighteousness cannot dwell together. So you got to be very mindful who's around you. Who you choose to be your peoples. Who you choose to have in your circles. Be very mindful of that because only those who fear God are going to direct their friendship all right. Because when you look at uh, in the time of Moses, they and then Kohath and them, they form a conglomerate. They didn't fear God. Therefore, their friend, they didn't build the right friendship. And what happened to them? They all got put to death. So, like they say in the world, birds of a feather flocks together. There's certain friends you, you befriend. 
The outcome for you is jail, locked up in jail, strung out on drugs. You know what I'm saying? If you're a woman, a hoe, or dead. Because that person is heading in that direction. Matter of fact, he's the headmaster of that, of that, of that path. And anybody who cling on to them, that's exactly where he's leading you. Because as, as he is, so his friends will be also. So you want to be around people who fear God. So if you don't fear God, you want to be around people who fear God. That means you might learn how to fear God. And when they correct you, it might hurt. But guess what? Eat the pain. Grow and learn from it and become better. That was a vote verse, right? Yep. Give me Proverbs. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 13 and 6. Deuteronomy 13 and 6. The book of De Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or the son of thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Stop. Actually, no, keep reading. Namely, of the gods of the people which are around about you, mm -hmm. nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end mm -hmm. of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thy eyes pity him. Neither shalt thou spare. Neither shall thou conceal him. So now, remember, it says, if your brother, let me make sure I get it right. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend... It doesn't matter what the nature of the relationship that person is to you. If that person was to entice you to serve other gods. Now, this verse 7 gave examples of uh, other deities, right? But here's the thing. Every time somebody pull you away to sin, you are serving another god. Because if I tell you to come smoke weed with me, guess what? I'm your god. And weed is your god. Because you listen to unrighteousness. Yo, let's go rent a train on this shorty. Guess what? Your penis become your God. Because you're not listening to the Bible at that time. You listen to your God. So anybody who entice you to sin. The scripture says, Thou shalt not consent. That's the first thing. Don't agree, don't agree to that thing. Nor hearken. Don't live and listen. Neither shall thy eye pity him. Neither shall thy spare. Neither shall thy conceal him. That means reveal that person. Rebuke with all authority. Read on. Verse 9. But thou shalt surely kill him. Hold up. Don't go kill nobody. That was for that time. I mean, it's going to happen in the wilderness. So today, how do we apply that verse? Rebuke with all authority. And a man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. If a person keep doing certain things they don't want to listen, you put them out. You deliver them unto Satan so they may learn to fear God. You understand? So today we don't physically go and kill people, but we put you out the body because guess what? You not, you're not good for us. You're a rotten apple, and if you stay among us, guess what? The whole congregation is going to get rotten. So we got to be keen. We got to be keen to who's around us. That's why we said order so we can uh, uh, inquire and talk to people, find out what they're into, what they're doing. And based on find, what we find out, we report it. And then guess what? In whichever way we can help the person, we'll help you. Do counseling on why not. But if you really don't want to change, guess what? We ain't going to spare you either. You got to go. Did you read the whole verse now? No. Some more. Read. Th thine hand shall be first upon him. Who, who's supposed to be the first? Thine hand. Shall be first upon him. So when you see sin, I don't see Bez in sin, and then I'm gonna run up to him. Yo, yo, you know he's in sin. No, if I see Bez in sin, I'm supposed to be the first one to correct us, uh, Bez. I'm not gonna leave it. I'm not gonna go run to him and tell him. If you see it, deal with it. Now, don't like a lot of time people. Uh, your approach is very key as well. Not every situation requires the same attitude. You follow? So you got to be keen. That's what scriptures does. Give you the skills to know how to deal with matters. 
But when you see sin, you got to be the first. If you see it, you let it slide, you evil as hell. Read. Thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all thy people. So afterwards, then, you know, certain people, yo, listen, I saw the brother, da 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 I dealt with him, you know what I'm saying? But I just want you to know that's what, you know, that brother's dealing with that. Okay, cool, you know what I'm saying? Then we know. Then that's like, maybe one day we're sitting down, you know, spirit might jump on me, we'll go over some scriptures dealing with that matter. To expound more on, so the brother or the sister can get their mind right. Give me 1 Samuel 18. Can't play with, with sin, man. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So these two men, they're so knitted together. Why? Because they were in the spirit. They did not, their soul did not knit in unrighteousness, but in righteousness. Read. And Saul took him that day mm -hmm. and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments even to, even to his sword. Remember we went into lose your money for your friends? That's a situation like that. Read. And to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set over him the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Uh, for sake of time, let's jump to verse 9. Verse 9. And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. So Saul became pissed off at David. Read on. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. So when you have an evil eye towards somebody, that means you got the damn devil on you. That's why Saul started hating David because David was do, uh, killing more people than him. He hated David because the people loved David. But not that they hated Saul, you know. They give him his credit for what he did. But David was doing more as far as killing people. He hated David for that. That's, that's, that's the devil. When you have a brother or sister right next to you and you hating on them because they're doing work for the Lord. We both supposed to be laboring in the truth. So what? I bring 10 pens and you only bring one. So what? Did you put it in your brick? Yes. A day might come where you might be able to do more than me. But whatever state you're in, just be happy in it and do the work. But the devil will jump on people because why? People want uh, recognition. They want power. They want people to acknowledge them. So they start hating people that get acknowledged more than them. That's what happened with Saul and David. Read. And David played with his hand, as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of, the, of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him, and made his, him his captain over a thousand. And he went out. And came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all the ways. And the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul so saw that... Verse 14, what you got to pick up is, although Saul was out there to kill David, David just behaved himself wisely. Move according to the law, statutes, and commandments. There's no law that tells David to hate his brother. Therefore, he could not hate him. Even though the brother hated David. That's what he meant by behave himself wisely. David was a warrior. He could have killed Saul if he wanted to, but he never did. Read. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he had be behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Why would he be afraid of him? Because he said, damn, the Lord is working with this dude. If the Lord is with him, I can't do nothing to him. You think that will help him get his mind right? He become more en 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 enraged. We know how the story ends with Saul, but we're not going to dive too much into that point. I want to deal with Jonathan. Keep reading. Verse 16, but all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, behold, my elder daughter, Merab, her I will give unto thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. 
And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And what is my life? You know what? And we're supposed to be reading. That's good. Jump to chapter 19, verse 1. The book is 1 Samuel, chapter 19, and verse 1. And Saul spake unto Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. So Saul spake to Jonathan. Remember, Jonathan loved David. So Saul told uh, um, his son, hey, listen, we're going to kill David. Read. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeketh to kill thee. What did Jonathan do? Saul, Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeketh to kill thee. What did he just apply? The scripture. Leviticus 5 and 1. He, there was no reason for Saul to want to kill David. So when word came to his ears like they want to kill David, he went straight to, yo, David, watch out, bro. My dad's going to kill you. He's looking to kill you. If you see sin, say speak against it. He didn't say, because, oh, damn, that's my dad. You know what I'm saying? That's the king. The hell with friendship. Stand on the side of righteousness. Read. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee. And what I see, that I will tell thee. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against thy, his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee, the well, word very what good. Verse, you want? Uh, verse 4. Verse 4. Read it again. Verse 4. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father. So... See how, what kind of brother Saul was? I mean, they, um, Jonathan was. He went and trying to put talk some sense into his father. Because he see that the dude is going off. That's what you got to do. That's how you got to deal. If somebody's going off, you got to talk sense into them. And if evil is spoken against it, like the bishop always say, you come to me with talking evil about somebody? Be like, word? Okay, cool. As soon as I see that person, yo, 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 come here, come here. Yo, tell me that thing you were selling about him again. I guarantee you never come to me with that nonsense again, ever. That's how you got to start treating people. Because you don't want worm tongue to get in your ears. Because guess what? If worm tongue's in your ears, you're defiled. They're going to suck the life out of you till you drop dead. Them, they're already dead. Satan is fully using them. Whenever worm tongue come into your ears, that's Satan. Satan already got that person. That's Satan trying to get you. So be very mindful. Read. It said unto him, let not the king sin against his servant. Let, like, let not the kid, king do what? Sin against his servant. So Saul is telling you th that, yo, you bugged out, man. What you plan on doing, that's sin. Mosai is not going to be happy with you. You gotta, say, you can't do this. You don't think Saul could have killed him? That's the king you're talking to. It doesn't matter. Speak righteousness at all time. Read. Against David, because he had not sinned against thee. And because his works have been to thee, the word, very good. So that's that person who turned against you, but you've been nothing but good to them. David has been nothing but good to Saul. He even trying to help Saul when Saul got evil spirit on him, played a harp for him to calm his spirit down. Went to war for him. But yet he was jealous. Read. Verse 5. For he put his life in the hand, in his hand, and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood, to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swear, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. So that's what Saul said, but we all know how that happened, how that ended up. All right? So the thing um, about Saul... Saul always wanted to kill David, wanted to kill David, but David never laid hand on him. And Jonathan applied the scriptures. He dealt right with his dad by rebuking him, and he evil was determined against David. He revealed it. That's how we got to be, all right? Uh, give me um, uh, Genesis 26, verse 5. Book of Genesis, chapter 26, and verse 5. Because, because that Abraham obeyed my voice, 
and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. Genesis 26 and 5. Read it again from the beginning. The book of Genesis, chapter 26 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Because that Abraham mm -hmm. obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So remember the Lord said Abraham is a friend of his. And what made Abraham a friend? Because he kept the laws, statutes, and commandments. So what you got to understand is the nature of David and Jonathan's relationship was biblical, was a good friendship because what? They dealt according to scriptures. Let's go to 1 Samuel 20, verse 8. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 20 and verse 8. Therefore, thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself. For why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? You see, David did not want sympathy from, uh, from Jonathan. He said, if there's sin in me, you got to kill me first. Don't even bring me to your dad. That's not what the scripture said. We read in Deuteronomy uh, 13 and 9. Sure. The, if you know that person enticed you to do evil, guess what? The, you, you're the first one that got to put hands on them. It's to show you that friendship was biblically based. That's why they were so tight because they were both about the laws, the statutes and the commandments. So our friendship cannot be based on biased things. We have to formulate real friendship. Just like the Mosai said, Abraham is my friend. That kind of friendship, that's the only friendship we got to develop. Read John 14, 15 to show you that's exactly what, if you're talking about friendship, that is the nature of friendship. So don't think Jonathan and David just had, you know, oh, yo, they were tight in evil. No, righteousness. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. If ye love me... No, 15, 14. The book of John, chapter 15 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. Ye are my friends. You are what? Ye are my friends. Ye are my friends, read. If, if ye do whatsoever I commanded you. Ye are my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. That is the nature of our friendship with God. To do what's commanded in the Bible. So... If that is the criteria to be friend with God, what is the criteria to have a friend on earth in the in this truth? That both parties are a friend of God. Because how can I be a friend to you if you're an enemy of God? So we can only be friends when you put yourself on that level where you do whatsoever the Lord commands you. Then I'm doing whatsoever the Lord commands me. Then guess what? We can, trust me, we're going to be just fine. Because we both are in the right spirit. So we got to build ourselves in the scriptures to create real friendship. Not that carnal friendship, or I like you, you like me. Oh, I, you got 25 kids, I got 25 kids. Okay, so we, let's, no, righteous friends. Give me uh, John, thir um, John 13, verse uh, 35. The book of John, chapter 13 and verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if... Ye have loved one another, one to another. So, Mosai knows that we are about this truth if we have love towards one another. What is love? The law, statutes, and commandments. So, when we abide in these things, guess what? We're gonna have, we're gonna be tight. We're gonna have good friendship, and the Lord's gonna be well pleased in that thing. So, if we're gonna want to prove a friend, we have to be about the scriptures. We can't hold no bars. We got to be able to correct people. We got to be able to reveal evil. Then that's how you show that you're about this truth. And that's the only time you're going to have real friends. When you stand firm for this truth. You're going to see the numbers might dwindle. You might start with having 25 people that like you. Over time, it might dwindle down to two. But it's better to be around two righteous people and 50 wicked pe than 50 wicked people. Because 50 wicked people will get you killed.
Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.